Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me again today. My name is General Confusion, and this is Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. So we are currently prosecuting our war against the Peacekeepers. Um, this guy might actually lose this fight, but I don't care because this is an old fusion-powered Chaos Needle Jet. So the Peacekeepers are about done for. They have this island over here left and these two bases, but this one here is undefended. So I'm just going to clean it out. If we'll only we didn't have options. all of these formers in the way. I'm just going to have to airdrop into it. Seems a little silly when it's two steps away, but oh well. So we've got that done. Request um, confirmation. We have 1,600 energy credits in reserve. I don't know why, but hey, it means that we can hurry things up really quickly, which is nice. Now, I am mostly going to, at this point, set my bases onto automatic, because at this point in the game, frankly, I don't need to be micromanaging bases. Um, I'm going to set them on to build. Request confirmation. Hurry that up, and then go to build. Why did you... Request confirmation. Okay, that was stupid. Um, we'll finish the ECM Photon Request Garrison first before I change him over to build. But I'm just doing this because Request I don't want to be going through each and every base and all of its uh, facilities, basically. Hi, Lau. Nope. Goodbye, Lau. So we're going to move the army down here, we're going to take over UN Social Council, and then I think probably we're going to execute our nuclear test here. Um, we're going to use our first Singularity Planet Buster on this UN island, and I think, if we aim it properly, I think it should take out all three bases. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe it'll do that. Let's airdrop this guy down to UN Settlement Agency, so we can move in that direction. Excuse me. And this clean chaos cruiser can just hang out in UN Ocean Authority for a little bit. You can automate. All you guys can just wait, honestly. Let's blow up that transport Combat foil. Forward. Get rid of a few Terraform enemy complete. units. And you, what were you looking for? There was something, wasn't there something that came out here? Maybe not. Wow. Come that back, plane boy. nearly died. Mm. Okay. We'll keep going on the exploration front because we are close to the end of the tech tree, but not quite there yet. So we need to get just a few more technologies in order to really finish the job. In just a couple of turns, however, my uh, Terraform complete. my Singularity Planet Buster will be ready to drop on Lal and finish him off forever. Let's see, unlinked node, unlinked node, unlinked node, distance 14, there we go. Indigenous life forms. Oh boy, all kinds of mind worms. Turn complete. Okay, so the university has built another base, but fortunately it's small and undefended. Oh, right. We can't build the nano factory because we already built it. So we will change that to... I think we're building the self-aware colony and the telepathic matrix. Let's Project do the dream twister initiated. over here. Production complete. Maximum okay. population reached. Yep, we're just going on Maximum automatic population here. Reached. Production complete. Maximum and population reached. Yes, that does mean that they're going to build Request a whole bunch of stuff that's unnecessary, like tachyon begun. fields, for instance. But, energy. eh. Maximum population reached. Drone riots. Wow. This is, I think, the first time I've had drone riots in forever. Uh, let's actually turn the governor off there. I don't know how I moved this. There we go. Okay, so one empath is enough to stop the drone riots. Let's turn that guy into an empath as well. We do not need a hab complex, that's for sure. 
we could use a network node, which will Maximum also kill reached. drones. Here's Deirdre's fishery. Production complete. What? Golden Age begun. Production Proceed. complete. Okay, Maximum falling water. Yep. Reached. Okay, and we're going to dis disembark some of our obsolete military units here to finish off Morgan's solar effects, which is not very well defended once the university declares war on us at our Queen Graviton Copter. Can move up to Morgan Interstellar. No, get into the base. That base is so hard to move things into. And you... Get that back down there. Stop building Queen Graviton Copters and start building more Singularity Planet Busters. We also have some drop Quantum Shock Troops right here. So great. And you will be able to take care of Deep Sea Lab. When that happens, it should be should be within 14 turns. The balloon goes up. Pod recovered. Okay, materials pod. That's nice. This singularity planet buster will go to. I can't quite get to Ocean Flower, but I can get to Last Rose of Summer. So let's do that. And this singularity planet buster. Ooh, are we in range? We're not quite in range. We'll go to UN Information Agency. Singularity cruiser transport. You will just. So UN information, it, didn't you? I thought I sent you to UN information agency. Oh well. Terraform complete. You all just wait for your moment. You drop shard squad. Perhaps a go over here and start options. finishing off the last defenders in front of the UN planning authority. You just wait. You get in there. Three to two. Yeah, against a scout rover. Three to two. Come on, Mindworms, you just really become so useless late game. So useless. Especially compared to my conventional units with ratios of more like 10 to 1. And let's see what else we got down here. Yep, just a transport foil left, so we'll finish that off. Oh, there's another transport foil should have used my copter first, and then I would have been able to finish it all off. Let's finish that guy off while we're here. Just so he doesn't cause any trouble for me. And then get back into UN Settlement Agency. That clean shard chopper. I don't need to worry about the units in these bases because they're about to be exploded. So who cares? I will finish off somebody here in UN Equality Village, though. You hold, you wait, you fly over here, and finish off somebody else in UN Equality Village. That's where the Peacekeeper Air Force, such as it is, is being kept. Okay. You just hold your horses. Shard Needle Jet. Yeah, you go blow up that colony pod, actually. I don't like Miriam having colony pods. I, I wonder why Miriam is building all these colony pods. I mean, seriously. There's no use for them currently. She doesn't have any transports around that can get them off her island. I understand why she's building defensive units. It's to keep me from attacking her. I mean, it's not... It's really just wasting minerals, but at least it's wasting my Air Force's turns at the same time. It's not like they're doing anything terribly useful, really. They're just sort of marking time, blowing things up. You, Isle of the Deep. There's some pods over there, so you hold on just a minute. You. See if you can capture some more mindworms. Nope. Goodbye. Turn complete. Forest expands, kelp expands, that's nice. Nutrients resource peters out near university base. So I'm not sure if this has happened before in this game, but this can happen in Alpha Centauri, as I believe in most civilization games. Natural resources can just give out after a certain amount of time. Maximum population reached. Okay, Golden Age, that's lovely. Request Build your hybrid forest. Maximum population Blasters reached. of Summer, Golden Age. Ah. Some would ask. How could a perfect god create a universe filled with so much that is evil? 
they have missed a greater conundrum. Why would a perfect God create a universe at all? Sister Miriam Godwinson, but for the grace of God. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Um, you know, why would God create a universe if he's perfect? By some definitions of perfect, perfect would mean, you know, containing everything or self-contained. So why would you need a universe? But in any case, so we have now created uh, controlled singularities. And uh, as a result, we now can have the singularity inductor, which counts as a quantum converter at every base, which increases minerals output. So that's hugely valuable. It's just so late that it doesn't really matter. Uh, we have, it unlocks the transcendent thought technologies, which are literally the end of the tech tree. Or at least it is a prerequisite to them. And it allows for the singularity laser, which is an energy weapon powered by a black hole, literally. Um, and has the highest weapon strength in the game. More than twice as powerful as any armor, I believe. I think it's, or it's, at least it is twice as powerful. Armor types, yeah, stasis generator is strength 12. And that is the strongest armor possible. So it's double the power of the strongest armor available ever. So yep, singularity lasers, singularity lasers. They're lovely and spiky looking. Production complete. Okay, yep, go on build. Project complete. And we've built the self-aware colony. We must descend. We must descend. We must descend. We must descend. Will we next create false gods to rule over us? How proud we have become. And how blind. Sister Miriam Godwinson, we must dissent. So, uh, now you see why I referred to this as the creepiest secret project. Uh, so that video gave us some interesting information. The we must dissent mantra repeated there, as well as the graffiti, seems to indicate that in the quote-unquote canonical game story, by this point, the believers have become some sort of underclass or possibly agents provocateurs. That might have been, you know, an agent of a believing probe team sent to spread dissent among the drones. Uh, but in any case, it's not so much a question of military conflict as ideological conflict. Of course, all military conflict so far has been driven by ideology, but you know what I mean. The self-aware colony refers to turning over control of the colony itself, the bases themselves, to AIs. And those AIs are performing police functions, like murdering believing provocateurs with lasers, and then erasing any evidence of what they did. So, you know, when Sister Miriam asks, will we next create false gods to rule over us? Yes, that's exactly what we've done. That is what the self-aware colony is. It's artificial intelligences that are controlling the movements and actions of the people in lieu of actual police forces. And that's what the self-aware colony does. It gives us an extra police unit in every base, and it also halves the maintenance cost for facilities. So it's worth it just for that, because that's by having the weeks. maintenance cost for facilities... Have you ever wondered why clouds behave in... We have... One that's second, let me... Population reached. Fort Liberty, what is your problem? Get a transcend. Change this to a network node. Yep, retool for a network node. Production complete. Okay, robotic assembly plant, blah 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 blah. We're producing 66 minerals. So you uh yeah, get us another singularity planet buster, Maximum why don't you? Population Port reached. Grace. Okay, so we just tipped over some kind of threshold that is giving us more drones, which is interesting because we did just get that free police unit 
effect. Um, and right now, it looks like we're only losing one drone from police. But we're getting drone rights in all of our captured bases, basically. Um, all the bases where we have just conquered the people and they're still angry about it. So let's go for that. Get that Request network node done. Production complete. Aerospace complex, lovely, lovely. Maximum population Aerospace reach. complex, lovely. Okay, so, yeah, if we look at our energy bank status right now, our net income just jumped to a thousand. We, because by cutting our maintenance in half, we saved something like 300 credits. We saved 11 credits here at Gaia's Landing, uh, 8 at University Base, 6 at Morgan Industries, 6 at Sparta Command. You know, it, it adds up really, really quick when you have a huge empire like this. But yeah, we have a lot of drones. Just really a lot. Uh, facilities, police. Yeah, police are only reducing drones by one, it looks like, which is very, very interesting. So Autumn Grove, let's get some transcends up in here in place of those highly, highly unproductive squares. Yep, that sounds good, okay. And now Autumn Grove can go to build. And you can move down. Yeah, sure, move down here. You're not really needed, but you might as well. Okay, Xenofungal Bloom, whatever. You hold up. Hold up. You get in there. You move over there to pick them up next turn. You, Locust of Curon, wipe out those Mindworms on your way over. Singularity Planet Buster. No, Singularity Planet Buster, come on. Singularity Planet Buster can go to UN Enforcement Base. Isle of the Deep can wait. Planes can fly down there and take out a few believe few peacekeepers, sorry, not believers. Combat report. Okay, now do we have some yeah, we have some drop troops. Airdrop into UN Equality Village. Yeah, okay, hi Lal. How's it going? Nope, uh, nope, I shall enjoy watching your bases burn. Uh, and I am absolutely going to watch your bases burn because I'm going to nuke them flat. We are going to pave your bases over. Sorry, Lau, but that's just how it has to be. Uh, do I have any more aircraft floating around somewhere? Yeah, I have this clean shard needle jet. I want to try to finish off UN planning authority this turn if I possibly can. Yay, now I don't think... Cannot execute order. Right, you can't airdrop because you didn't start on a friendly base, but you can just do that. So that's fine. And you... <sighs> no, unless you're calling to abjectly surrender. Actually, even abjectly surrendering isn't enough. So never mind, I just don't want to talk to Lal under any circumstances. Kill that guy. Yeah, see, three to four odds because of the um, fusion reactor. That is the problem with mindworms. So you all just wait. You can hold. You can wait, you can wait, you can wait, you can wait. Where are my planet busters? They should be here. Ah, there it is, but it's already moved. So next turn, next turn we'll drop the bomb. In the meantime, all these jokers can just, yeah, automate. You just wait. Automate. Automate. You keep patrolling, I guess. Hi, friends. Uh, you can wait. You link up. Let's see what we discover. There's only a few technologies left on the tree. Optical computers, genetic catalogs, nano repair modules. Forget all of that. It's when you see a megaton of steel suspended over your head by a thread the thickness of a human hair that you really find God in technology. Anonymous Metagenics Dock Worker, Morgan Link 3D Vision Live Interview. Okay, so this is an old technology that we managed to skip through the vagaries of random research. Um, with advanced space flight and matter compression, we've gotten super tensile solids. So we've learned how to create materials that are so well compressed and so strong that they are essentially unbreakable. So that allows us to build the habitation dome, which increases uh, population cap, the space elevator, which doubles economy at this base, doubles mineral production at 
all the bases when they're building satellites, and it lets drop pod units orbitally insert anywhere on the planet. Now we can already do that because we already did that research. Uh, it also means that all aerospace complex restrictions on orbital improvements are waived. So in other words, uh, we can we can get full value from our satellites at all bases, including those that don't have aerospace complexes, and we can build them at all bases, even those that don't have aerospace complexes. So that was nice. You, meanwhile, can go where? Um, hmm. Not sure where you should go. You can just sit tight for now. And you can, yeah, you need to step out of university territory, actually, because I believe when the pact ends, otherwise you'll be teleported away. So you can just kind of sit on the borders, watching and waiting. And you can move right over there. And you, sir, I could Singularity Planet bust the university as well, but I want to save my bombs for the, um, the Peacekeepers and the Believers. Turn complete. Maximum population reached. Yep, keep Maximum random research. Population reached. Yeah, you've got your hybrid forest to go to build Maximum mode. Maximum population reached. You're already in build mode. Maximum, Maximum population whale. But we felt the reassuring tingle of the tachyon field crackling to life around us, encasing the entire base in its impenetrable glow. Spartan Kel, the fall of Sparta. So that's only interesting, really, because it refers to the fall of Sparta, which confirms that the Spartans were destroyed at some point, uh, in conjunction with the earlier mentions of the Gaian Spartan secret war. That probably means that at some point in the canonical timeline, the Gaians, aka us, destroyed the Spartans, which we did. So you know, we're uh, we're Maximum pretty much following reach. the plan here. Ooh, training camp is having a heat wave still. Drone I'd forgotten about that. Ended. Drone riots have ended. Yep, I know drone riots Maximum have ended. population reached. Okay, and now we've developed antimatter Abort, point. retry, fail was the phrase some worm dog scrawled next to the door of the Edit Universe project room. And when the new data spinners started working, fabricating their worlds on the huge organic comp systems, we'd remind them, if you see this message, always choose retry. Badal Ron, Wakener, Morgan Polysoft. So, Wakener, remember that earlier uh, tech we got that talked about how they're developing AIs? Wakeners are people who are not so much programming as teaching software to learn. So with matter editation, uh, we have now learned how to, by using self-aware machines in conjunction with these super compressed materials we've created, we can now actually alter the characteristics of individual atoms directly, which basically lets us perform alchemy. Um, through atomic manipulation, we can turn anything into anything else. And that allows us to create any antimatter plate, which is strength 10 armor, the second best armor in the game. It also allows the nano replicator, which increases minerals output. Again, you can combine all of these things and stack a base that's producing literally hundreds of minerals if for some reason you feel the need to. And clinical immortality, which is a secret project. And it just gives us an extra talent at every base, which doesn't seem very valuable given the way our psych spending is already making everybody talents, but it can be useful playing on harder difficulty levels where it's a lot harder to deal with drone problems. It also doubles your votes in elections, but at this point, if you're still having elections, what are you doing with yourself? So the longevity vaccine earlier made people long-lived. This makes them immortal. No more disease, no more death. I don't care about the new units. Okay, here we go. So, a Singularity Planet Buster, the single most powerful unit and weapon in the game. Um, unfortunately, we can't just bomb any random space with it. We have to hit either a base or a unit. Why did you... Oh, gosh. Okay, so that is one of the irritating things about Planet Busters, about missiles. They end their turn if they reach a base. They just end their turn, no matter how many moves they had left. So this guy moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. He had plenty of moves to get down here and hit UN Criminal Tribunal. 
or even UN disaster relief, but instead he reached UN Amnesty Town and ended his turn. So I guess we have to wait another turn. In the meantime, we'll just pull all our troops into bases. And Hi Lal, what? No, prepare to be annihilated. He's trying to surrender. Nope. I don't care about your surrender, Lal. You're going to be a test case for our singularity weapons. Too bad. So sad. I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not really sorry. You, meanwhile, can carry that to an unlinked node in Fort Survivalist. And you can wait. That boil. Um, actually, go grab that pod. Oh, it's just a monolith. Okay, lots of things happening. Lots of things happening. That's fine. You go to... I, I know there were some pods still sitting in the ocean somewhere. Where were they? I saw them. There they are. You just hold on. Y'all hold your horses. Okay, now you. You have 20 moves. You're not going to hit a, hit a base. That's a former. Actually, if I blow that up. Yeah, so the Singularity Planet Buster. The radius of destruction is determined either by... It's either the radius or the diameter that is determined by... Um, the reactor level, and I don't remember which, so I'm going to drop this here. Ready, ladies and gentlemen? Big boom coming up. There we go. It was the radius. Our pact of brotherhood with the university has ended. Zakharov has pronounced vendetta. Yeah, but that's fine. So, if you'll notice, that island is gone entirely gone. One of our bases that was too close is also gone. If we go over here, you'll see that there is now an ocean trench 2,000 meters deep where that base used to be. Right here, um, we have a monolith floating in the ocean, which is kind of a, a side effect of this kind of thing when you use a weapon like this in the game. Um, the monoliths don't disappear like they're supposed to. Down here, we have a few little pieces of land surviving. But uh, most of the island has just vanished, absolutely. And as you can see, the crater over here gets shallower and shallower as it heads towards the beach. But right in the center, 2,000 meters deep, compared to, I think the land was how high? 1,000 meters, something like that? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is nuclear weapons in the age of Alpha Centauri. Uh, yeah, we're disembarking mindworms, aren't we? Oh, we missed by one. Okay, so the uh, university has now ended their pact with us, which is fine. We're just going to... Oh, that guy was in university territory? Huh. Didn't know that. Uh, I don't remember where you're going, so uh, you just stay there. And the university just tried to probe us, which was very silly because we are immune to probe teams. And we're still immune to probe teams, no matter how many times you try. Planet Blight destroys all farms and forests near UN Social Council. We need more biology labs. Whatever. Project complete. Okay, so the Dream Twister, which was, if you will recall, unlocked by the Will to Power, is plus 50% to Psy attack. Now, if you'll remember, the, um, 
we had a secret project that gave us plus 50% to side defense, which was called the, oh, I don't remember what, which one it was. I don't remember what the name of it was. It was the, the Neural Amplifier. If you, and if you look here, the icons are almost the same, except the Neural Amplifier has a shield, and the Dream Twister has this uh, big star. Uh, yeah, that's the Star of Chaos. That's the eight-pointed Star of Chaos if you're into Warhammer 40k. In any case, um, they're almost the same, and their videos were very similar in a strange way. The Neural Amplifier, if you'll recall, showed very similar images, the snake, the spider, but it was superimposed with the image of those three soldiers, and the music was much more soothing. The, so the Neural Amplifier is about blocking out that kind of imagery, the psychic bombardment. The Dream Twister is about amplifying those and driving them into the minds of your enemy in much the same way that mind worms do they paralyze their enemies with psychic terror and then implant eggs in their brain however we are probably just using this to paralyze them so that we can kill them so this is what psychic combat looks like you have these powerful cyborg genetically modified psychics bombarding the enemy with horrifying images as they close in while the enemy tries to resist. And how do they try to resist? Well, with soothing images and hypnotic trances. Remember, hypnotic trance was the very first thing we developed that could be used as a defense against psychic assault. So how do you institute a, psych a, a, a trance? Repetition. With a repetitive, easy-to-remember mantra that you can use to fall into your own head, like a children's rhyme. So this is the final transmission from Assassin's Readout. Uh, Assassin's Readout is one of the Spartan base names, the, the automatic ones that the game throws up. We know that the Spartans were destroyed by the Gaians, and Sparta Command was destroyed by the Gaians. We know that the Gaians were using mind worms and psychic attacks because, if you'll recall the, yeah, the quote from the Citizens Defense Force down here, we see Lady Deirdre overseeing a mind worm boil swarming over a base somewhere. So, this quote is probably from a Spartan base being overwhelmed by either Gaian mind worms or, this late in the game, Gaian psychics. And their last broadcast is somebody on the radio trying desperately to hold the defenders together with a nursery rhyme. That's a little creepy. Maximum population reached. Okay, university base, you also go into Production build mode. Complete. Flowers preach. Population reach. Build mode. Maximum population reach. Defiance freehold. Build mode. Maximum population Song of planet. Reach. Build mode. Maximum population. Guys, reach. high garden. Build mode. Maximum population reach. Okay, another singularity planet buster, which we will use on the believers. Oh, we can't quite reach. Actually, we might use this on the university. If we were to drop a bomb on Oceanographic Lab, I think it might take out Morgan Solar Effects. Let's try it. You just got teleported away. But you know what? I'll attack Oceanographic Lab anyway. Oh, wow, it only had one defender. Okay, never mind. Oh, I can't airdrop because I'm not in a base. Well, let's go attack Morgan Solar Effects. The university is so amazingly outclassed in terms of technology right now that it's just not funny. Alright, Morgan Solar Effects is mine. Uh, now that I've dropped a bomb, the nobody is ever going to negotiate with me again. They're just going to wage war. And that is it. So sad. But, uh, knew this would come. Okay, so there's Marine Biology Lab. Uh, let's get another Transcend, shall we? Oh, no, yeah. Minerals. And then you can head over towards Deep Sea Lab and finish that off as well. These guys can all just hold because I don't need them. Uh, you can blow up that transport so it doesn't try anything shady, like running away. And then we have Hydrothermal Institute way down there, which we are going to have to send a C unit to capture. Or actually, yeah, because it's defended, so we can't drop directly into it. Otherwise, our drop singularity shock troops could literally orbitally insert into that base. Um, I am actually... 
Yeah, I think I'm just going to airdrop into Time of Salvation, honestly. It's undefended. I might as well. There's no point not. And let's get a recycling tanks here. So now we have a foothold on Miriam's Island as well. You, yeah, you go off and take out these bases, please. Um, you can do that as well. We don't need you down here. And you, let's get another technology. Finish off the tech tree the as fast as we can. The first thing to go through the device was a small white rat. I still have him, in fact. As you can see, the damage was not so great as they say. Academician Proker Zaharov. See how they run. Okay, so matter transmission, teleportation. With matter editation and the secrets technologies, we have now developed the ability to transmit things through Star Trek style teleporters. Uh, we can disassemble objects into the smallest component subparticles, then transmit those particles and their underlying blueprints to a receiver, and the receiver then reassembles those objects perfectly. This, of course, is the kind of teleporter that raises the question of, for instance, is someone killed if they go through a transporter? Um, and that is a philosophical question that is a little bit beyond the scope of the game, but we now have the Blink Displacer, which is a unit ability that allows a unit to ignore all base defenses when they attack. We can build the Psi Gate, so units can teleport between bases which have a Psi Gate. We can build the Bulk Matter Transmitter, which just gives you two extra minerals at every base. This is one secret project that I would say is actually not worth it. Um, two minerals at every base. A few minerals spread out among every base is not worth as much as a bunch of minerals concentrated in one place. And a bunch of minerals concentrated in one place is what it takes to build the bulk matter transmitter. So this really never pays itself off. Especially because it comes really late game when the game's almost over. The quote is nice, though. You know, this is Miriam Godwinson in We Must Descent, which seems to have been her last book. Talking about these teleporters and saying, you know, what, what is going to happen to the soul? You know, if you believe in the soul, this kind of teleportation, how does that affect said soul? And it increases mineral production in fungus squares. So, no, I'm not interested in new units. So, if you have this technology, then we can look at a fungus square. Now a fungus square produces three nutrients, two minerals, and two energy. So, it's better than anything except a forest square running hybrid forest, or a specialized, like, condenser square or borehole square. So, at this point, fungus actually has become quite valuable. The only thing is, you know, we really don't need fungus anymore. So let's get the rest of our nuclear arsenal moving. Uh, these locusts of Curon could just stay there. I'm actually going to tell some of these people just to hold because I don't need them anymore. Uh, you blow him up. We don't need him around. The peacekeepers are mostly gone, but uh, Lal apparently had gone off to UN Peace Anchorage before the bombs dropped and so was able to survive. Good for him. We'll airdrop some troops over into Time of Salvation. And this Singularity Planet Buster... Ooh, we can hit the Voice of God. We could even hit the Rapture. Let's go first down here. Use more spaces. Three. Okay, we have five moves left. And take it, believers. Yep. Yeah, planet busters. They're um this is the uranium flats now. It's a crater twenty two hundred meters deep beneath the ocean. Uh by comparison, the land that used to be here was at least 2,000 meters deep. So we just blew a crater in planet at least four kilometers deep. That's what just happened. And we still have a couple of those bombs running around out there somewhere. You, um, with your 12 move, yeah, you go over to Time of Salvation. We'll be able to finish off the Believers pretty easily here. 
by airdropping in troops. Yeah, you shall suffer for this outrage. This is all that you get after you've dropped bombs on somebody. The enemy just scream at you. They don't try to surrender. They don't try to uh, negotiate. Nothing. Okay, you just wait up for a minute. So we'll finish off the, the Believers post-haste. We could actually make this the last episode. Oh, that chopper didn't quite reach safety. Aw. I thought it would. I was short by one space. But yes, with our drop shard troops being able to move around, you have butchered thousands of my people, Deirdre. Really? Only thousands? I blew up five bases. And of course, that caused immense ecological damage to planet, but uh, it was a price that we had to pay in exchange for our eudaimonic society. Oh, good. More mindworms. That's what I needed. Not. Turn complete. Now, unfortunately, I have not yet managed to finish the, uh, yeah, and you can see more mindworms showing up, but with the neural amplifier and the trance and the base bonus, our basic um, units are more than enough to hold off mindworms. So let's build here the singularity inductor. Project initiated. Free farm, fine. Maximum population. Robotic finished. assembly plant, fine. Production complete. Intellectual golden age, fine. Production complete. Golden age, fine. Maximum population. Fusion reached. lab, yeah, okay. Production complete. Robotic assembly plant, yeah, good. Maximum Time travel population reached. in the classic sense has no place in rational theory, but temporal distortion does exist on the quantum level, and more importantly, it can be controlled. Academician Prokhor Zaharov, for I have tasted the fruit. Okay, so we have now harnessed not only the ability to compress matter, not only the ability to edit matter at the atomic level, but also the ability to control time. Through matter transmission and eudaimonia, somehow, I'm not sure how eudaimonia breaks into this, but we can now control time itself to some degree, which allows us to build the stasis generator, which is strength 12 armor. It also increases energy production in fungus squares. Why? I'm not certain. That's the other prerequisite to threshold of transcendence, which is the next technology we need to get. And that's because threshold of transcendence is what kicks off the very end of the game. We were already in the very end part of the game, but this is the climax. With all of our technological power, with the secrets of creation, singularity mechanics, sentient AIs, the ability to control singularities, the ability to control gravity, and now the ability to control time, as well as the, you know, the secrets of creation, the unified field theory, everything that we've discovered, we have now, we are now about to develop the ability to population surpass mortal limits, to move beyond the body to create a physical, mental, and psychic link with planet, with the overarching, oh, how would you describe it? With the mind that controls planet. The mind that is planet, rather. Because remember, we've already heard all this stuff about the, um, the, the fungus forming neural relays and the, the planet itself being an organism with a sentient mind. And so we are about to uh, prove those theories, and not only prove them, but use them. We already know, rather, that planet is sentient, but what we're about to do is uh, join with planet in that way. Now, my only question here is, I'm going to start dropping my drop troops all over the world to pick up the last few pods, so I'm just going to move my transports up in this direction to grab them once they've done that. However, I think I'm actually going to, if I look at my laboratory status, yeah, in two more turns I'm going to discover Threshold of Transcendence, which I believe is the only technology left. So we're going to take Goblins it's Hope, and we've eradicated the Believers. Yep, no need to no need to watch the video about that. We've seen that before. 
it's just the torture bubble. Okay, and you airdrop to actually... Oh, the unit has already moved this turn. That's fine. You now... Um, let me go to my design workshop and instead of a missile foil, design an infantry unit with plasma shard and silk steel armor that has drop pods and is amphibious. That's fine. Proceed with that redesign. So now you, let's upgrade you to... Why can't I upgrade you to that unit? Man. Oh, because the armor... I think because the armor wasn't as good. And it has to be better in order to... <sighs> well, let's get Plasma Shard. Uh, neutronium. Sure. Drop Pods and Amphibious Pods. Drop Shard Marines. Yep, proceed with redesign. Now, can I upgrade you to Drop Shard Marines? Yes, I can, but it will cost me 3,800 energy. Wow. No thank you. I'll just airdrop you up over here to grab some pods then, shall I? Indigenous life forms. Oh boy, infested with native life forms. Okay, we captured those mind worms. Perhaps a careful review of your options. Uh, yeah, get rid of them. Wow. That was unlucky. We, okay, we lost that hardcore. But we got some mind worms over there and that's what we needed. You can't drop. You can't drop at all. You can take Oceanographic Lab, though. And then you can take Deep Sea Lab and destroy it. And then move down here to finish off the last university base. We are going to have to keep the last peacekeep Peacekeeper base around because we don't want to end the game before we reach the ultimate end of everything, before we create our transcendence. So I'm just going to end my turn, actually. Industrial collapse, I don't care. We've built the telepathic matrix, that's pretty cool. From the delicate strands, between minds we weave our mesh. A blanket to warm the soul. Lady Deidre Sky, The Collected Poems. Okay, so the telepathic matrix, we now, now never have drone riots. Uh, that was probably uh, a view of a paradise garden, or possibly the Xeno Empathy Dome, we're not really sure, but something... You know, some garden facility in a Gaian base, presumably Gaia's Landing, although that doesn't seem to have been Lady Deirdre's sky because Lady Deirdre has black hair, and that lady was blonde. Although, who knows, maybe all the genetic modification has turned her into a blonde. Maximum population reached. So, clinical immortality. I sit in my cubicle here on the mother. The governor of Razorbeak Wood requests permission to commence work on an immense secret project, the space elevator. Okay, so if you have a base that is under governor control, they will ask you before they build secret projects. So yeah, let's commence work on the space elevator, which will take eight turns. Request confirmation. Um, or we could just complete it immediately. Let's complete it immediately. Production complete. That's fine. Production complete. That's also fine. Production complete. Yep. Good job, Maximum guys. population reached. Uh-huh. Production complete. So at this point, we have complete dominance of planet. Uh, our only enemies, quote-unquote enemies, are sitting over here basically waiting to die because they have nothing going for them, nothing on their side, no chance of victory. So, uh, I am actually just going to, I think, actually at Fleet Anchorage, I am going to build a sea colony pod. Can I do that? Workshop. Turn that into a cruiser. Uh, fusion cruiser, quantum, yeah, let's make a singularity cruiser. Colony pod, and let's build one here. Request confirmation. Just so that I can move something, I can ship a missile over to finish off UN Peace Anchorage at some point. But other than that, I'm going to end my turn. Maximum population reached. Trans antimatter sentinels, yeah, sure. Production complete. 
Uh, to the new drop shard invaders, obsolete, obsolete drop quantum shock troops? No. Why would I do that? Uh, yeah, sure. Maximum population reached. Okay. And when he complete. has brought forth and reared this perfect virtue, he shall be called the friend of God. And if ever it is given to man to put on immortality, it shall be given to him. Plato, the Symposium, Data Links. Okay, so here we have the threshold of transcendence with the, the discovery of temporal mechanics. We now have control of gravity. We have control of time. We have control of space with our control of singularities and matter editation. We have root kit access to the universe. And with all of this technology and the knowledge of the secrets of creation and the secrets of Alpha Centauri, how we know how the, the mind functions, we have now entered a new era. As it says here, in this transitional state, individuals begin preparations for the final stage of evolution, selling possessions, cleansing their bodies according to a new code of asceticism, and meditating alone and unprotected in the remote regions of planet. We have conquered planet in the sense that we have defeated all of our human rivals, but we cannot and have not conquered the cycle that planet is going through. Yes, we have tamed the fungus. Yes, we can hold off the mind worms, but there is another step to be taken. So with this, this last technology, we can now build the voice of planet, which allows us to begin the ascent to transcendence. And finally, the ascent to transcendence, which as it says here, completes the transcendence sequence and ends the human era. So what we need to do is proceed, I guess proceed. Oh, we just built the space elevator. In one moment, Earth. In the next, Heaven. Academician Proker Zaharov for I have tasted the fruit. Okay. It's interesting, actually, that um, in this game, the space elevator mm -hmm. comes so late in the game when we've developed all this other crazy sci-fi technology. Because in a lot of sci-fi, space elevators appear kind of in conjunction with a cyberpunkish world that doesn't have nearly this kind of control over their environment. I think this is actually more realistic in a way. A space elevator is an incredibly difficult project that requires, in order to build it at all, it requires some kind of um, material science that we just don't have and we don't know when, if ever, we're going to get it. So let's look at our best bases. Our best base for minerals is Forest Primeval. We are going to change from the Singularity Planet Buster, which we don't need, to build the Voice of Planet. Retool for the voice of planet. Initiated. So we've begun building the voice of planet, and immediately we get an interlude. It's been a rough year at Gaia's Landing, and tempers are beginning to flare at your council sessions. Across the entire region, citizens are reporting strange dreams and even rudimentary contacts. A new cult revering planet as a vengeful savior has gained wide popularity among the drone population and even with many normals. Its prophets, calling themselves flowers, preach a gospel of abstinence, pacifism, and destruction of private property. The telepathy of the empath schools aren't talking, but many have quietly begun selling off their possessions and withdrawing from public life. Meanwhile, cultural life continues unabated. A new dance, the planetary thunder, is sweeping wreck domes throughout the faction. Dancers stomp at time to the beat and claw at their eyes. Morgan Pharmaceuticals has released several new recreational drugs, and the Holo Psi Virtual Life industry is having one of its most successful years ever. As for yourself, you haven't heard from Voice much lately. She seems preoccupied with her poetry. You have to admit she's gotten a lot better at it since her early doggerel. Some of her newest verse is so deep as to stagger the imagination. More ominously, her predictions of growth dream have become more frequent and more forceful. You have also ordered work on a secret new project you call the Voice of Alpha Centauri. A kind of synergistic psi projector, it should, if all goes well, allow voice to think and communicate more effectively, a prosthetic aid wired directly to the main colony data links. You have not yet mentioned this project to voice. 
Request confirmation. Okay, so let's get that done immediately. Okay. Maximum population reached. And Forest Primeval has built the voice of planet. We're just going to finish the game up in this episode. So here's the interlude. Earth Deirdre, growth dream soon is. Sorrow we of goodbye. Weeks of waiting in the inception chamber, and now, finally, a contact. Fortunately, Voice has finally learned to window her psi contact so that you retain the use of your muscles and senses during your conversations. This will be necessary for what you have in mind. So, Voice, quickly keying the sequence. It has been a while. Code Green proceeding to authorization step, enter password. Wait, before you go, I have a gift for you. Password accepted. So, Growth Dream now is Remember We You Next Cycle. So, recall what the Growth Dream was. Every time the, the mind of planet reaches sentience, a sudden massive acceleration of the fungus growth, fungal growth, and mind worms happens all over the planet, kills off everything else, and then the system collapses as everything dies. So, the program you have just activated is now pumping the entire contents of the planetary data links, the sum total of human knowledge, through the new Psylink and blasting it into Voice's fragile, if immense, organic neural net with the full power of every reactor on the planet. Thousands of years of civilization compressed into a single searing burst of revelation, a last-ditch attempt to win humanity a reprieve from extinction at the hands of an awakening alien god. These, um, these last few interludes were actually inserted into the game. Imagine the entire contents of Hold the up. planetary data links, the sum total of human knowledge, blasted into the planet mind's fragile neural network with the full power of every reactor on the planet. Thousands of years of civilization compressed into a single searing burst of revelation. That is our last-ditch attempt to win humanity a reprieve from extinction at the hands of an awakening alien god. Okay, so yeah, that's the beginning of the Ascent to Transcendence, uh, with the construction of the Voice of Planet. Uh, I don't really like that last um, interlude there. It was inserted later in the game's development in a, a post-release patch, and it just sort of copied this quote by Proko Zakharov. But think about what this quote tells you. This is Academician Zakharov, okay? He's lasted the whole game. The university is still a factor on planet, still one of the major players, clearly. Planet Speaks is the name of this speech or pamphlet or whatever it is that he's putting out. And in it, he says, basically, look, we have control over time. We have control over matter. We can create anything we want. We can teleport through interstellar space. We can, we can control black holes. We can create artificial universes. And with all that power, we are not going to win this. We have to do something or planet is going to crush us because planets, psychic, I don't know what, the flowering, the growth dream, is going to overwhelm this pocket of human civilization that has developed on Chiron and has grown to such immense heights. And so they do this. They, they pour all of humanity's knowledge into the planet mind in a desperate effort to convince it not to destroy them or to make some kind of more meaningful contact with it. Okay, so fungus growth stabilized. Some of the major forests are manifesting new structures we haven't seen before, and growth is still proceeding in some sectors, but critical expansion has now ceased. For the first few minutes after the inception pending light blinked off, it appeared humanity had written its final chapter. Critical fungus growth in all sectors, some outlying settlements overwhelmed. But the data link cyburst appears to have disrupted the growth process, and now, out in the fungal forests, something new has begun, as if your gift to voice is being digested, integrated. Look at the neural feedback we're getting on this thing. The fungus already had far more connectivity than even our most powerful AI. Now it must be orders of magnitude beyond. Reports continue to trickle in. Time passes, and now there is nothing to do but wait. The synthetic voice booms suddenly from the enunciator, lifting you half out of your couch with fright. Voice's window in your mind has remained closed since the inception sequence. Voices must now, voice must now be using the new Psy-Link. 
So basically what you can pause the video and read this if you like, but basically by shoving all of that information and knowledge and history into the planet mind, it says here, your magnificent gift bootstrapped us to the second tier in time to postpone the final metamorphosis. So this is the thing. The planet always flowers before it can actually gain enough control of itself to stop the process. Everything dies off. It starts again. We've sidestepped that process. We've made voice more intelligent, planet more intelligent in time for it to halt the growth stage. But now it says here, our growth stage has been suspended but cannot be put off indefinitely. Come, children, there is much to be done if you are to join us in the flowering. This population is transcendence. This is what transcendence means. We are going to join with planet, mentally at least. Uh, we already have Project transcends, which initiated. are, I believe, AIs, people who have been uploaded into our own networks. Insufficient energy. And now we are going to upload people into the fungal network. Which, as they said, is much more powerful than any AI we have ever built or ever possibly could build. So we're just going to end our turn a few times. With the voice of planet operational, humanity may now begin its ascent to transcendence. Any faction may now initiate the ascent to transcendence project in any base. The first faction to complete the project will imprint its ideals most deeply on the planetary mind. Okay. So this is the ultimate victory condition. Um, you know, this whole, the conflict in this entire game has been about ideology, has been about who will control the fate of the human race with their ideals of what the human That's race should be. And now... Eternity lies ahead of us and behind. Have you drunk your fill? Lady Deidre Sky, Conversations with Planet, Epilogue. So now, with the, the Ascent to Transcendence, we now have the chance to use, to form the ideals of our faction into the basis for the development of the new transcendent beings that humanity will be, in conjunction with Planet Mind. So yeah, the technology finally unlocks the keys to the final stage of evolution with transcendent thought, the ability to contain a self-awareness or soul outside the bounds of a corporeal form. Those who so choose may now complete the ascent to transcendence, joining their consciousness with the planetary mind in ageless immortality. Hello, lady. Dr. Scott's voice crackles over the enunciator. How do you like my new body? Dr. Scott's body reached the outer limit of longevity treatment several years ago. He has now joined the ranks of the transcendi, daring souls who have downloaded their personalities into powerful polymorphic AI nets to free themselves of the human form. So how is the research going with Planet? And now he, he gives the um, he, he gives the explanation. The, the fungus has been the dominant life form on the planet since about the time of the lower Paleozoic. Every hundred million years or so it becomes sentient, but the final metamorphosis kills off pretty much everything else. Without food source or animal symbiotes to help it, the fungus maintains a brief time, sentient and godly essentially, but then dies back into the flower dream for another hundred million years or so. And it always becomes intelligence just exactly too late to do anything about it. And now we've broken the cycle. So, is it possible to prevent the dieback, and can we survive as a species if this planet flowers to godhood? This is a little bit out of sync, I would say. These are a little bit out of order, because we already know. We've already talked to planet by completing the Voice of Planet project. Um, I imagine Brian Reynolds anticipated that normally you would discover the first transcendent thought before you completed the project, but we just hurried the project with our huge amounts of cash. So anyway, basically... Um, the ascent to transcendence is humans uploading their personalities into the planetary mind. That means giving up your body, but, you know, those who wish to live out their lives in their original human form can do so, because we have stasis generators, we have singularity generators, all that stuff. We can, we can preserve genetic material, everything that we need for physical life, but everybody who wants to will be able to upload into the planetary mind. However, 
Although anyone will be able to achieve virtual immortality by uploading into the planetary mind, only a few of us will be invited to join the dominant personality, to transcend our humanity entirely and reach a truly higher plane of existence. Your friendship with Planet's immature mind may give us a leg up in this area, but I predict that it is the group who best and most quickly prepares itself for this step, the group who first embraces this ascent to transcendence. It is that group which will be tapped to lead us into the new era. So this is the Ascent to Transcendence project, and that's why it's so important, because by completing it first, before anybody else can, you win energy. the ability to basically control transcendence, the what the transcendent mind does. Now, of course, we don't have any rivals, so it's just going to be us. Project complete. Okay, we've built the Singularity Inductor. Let's take a look at that. What actually transpires beneath the veil of an event horizon? Decent people shouldn't think too much about that. Academician Prokhor Zaharov, for I have tasted the fruit. Okay, so the Singularity Inductor. This quote, interestingly, is a reference to one theory about black holes, which is that um, artificial universes essentially exist uh, inside event horizons. Uh, it's kind of a, a fringe physics theory, but it makes mathematical sense, actually. And so, essentially, Prokhor Zakharov is saying that by building the Singularity Inductor and our Singularity Generators and our Singularity Lasers and all that stuff, we are creating universes and then destroying them just because we want to use the energy. Which is, so as he says, decent people shouldn't think too much about that because theoretically, if that's true, you know, we are, we are creating and destroying quintillions of people, sentient beings of some kind. Production complete. Production complete. Production complete. Production complete. Eternity lies. Look at any photograph or work of art. If you could duplicate exactly the first tiny dot of color and then the next. Insufficient energy. Maximum population reached. Okay, so now we're having more Maximum fungus growth. Population reached. Despite all of our lots Maximum of more fungus growth. Reached. And more transcendent thought. Maximum population reached. So the fungus is growing despite everything that we've done to limit the ecological effects of everything that we're doing. Complete. Just because, you know, it, it can't be stopped at this point. We shall take only the greatest minds, the finest soldiers, the most faithful servants. We shall multiply them a thousandfold and release them to usher in a new era of glory. Colonel Corazon Santiago, the Council of War. Okay, so it's interesting that we have only now completed the cloning vats because they're very old tech at this point. Uh, presumably, most of the time you would have this well before this point. Uh, I just didn't bother to make them because they weren't very useful. But the cloning vats uh, basically allow us to clone people ad infinitum. That's all they do. You know, it's a prerequisite is biomachinery, which is way back down the tech tree. Uh, but we've got them now. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever, we must send him forth. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. The Conclave Bible. Data links. And there we have clinical immortality, which the That's implication there is that reached. clinical immortality is not actually some kind of medical breakthrough, but rather the ability to 
separate people from their bodies, which we already had in the form of the Transcendi, but I'm not sure exactly what clinical immortality is supposed to be. Um, that seemed to imply that it was one brain living in this, you know, of the upper class, clearly, living in a huge mansion. But in any case, we Golden have that now as begun. well. Golden Age begun. Golden Age begun. Production complete. Golden Age begun. Golden Age begun. And Golden with the extra begun. talent, every single begun. base Golden has now entered begun. a Golden Age. Production so, complete. yeah, don't show that as a pop-up anymore, ship, please. Um, at this point, we're just completing the, trans the Ascent to Transcendence. Energy. We just need to do that, and that is the end of everything. And we will leave the last few surviving University and Peacekeeper men and women will be invited to join us in the Transcendence, but uh, that will just have to be their choice. Coming up on the Transmitter. And what of the immortal soul in such transactions? Can this machine transmit and reattach it as well? Or is it lost forever, leaving a soulless body to wander the world in despair? Sister Miriam Godwinson, we must dissent. Okay, so that's the bulk matter transmitter. You may notice the bulk matter transmitter is transmitting spacecraft in that video. So we're not actually bound to planet. It's just planet is where everything is focused, but that starship went somewhere else. More fungus growth, more fungus growth, fungus growth, fungus growth. Yep, Morgan Transport can't build clinical immortality. Um, just, just stockpile energy, Morgan Transport. Yep, do that. Okay, there we go. We have built the Ascent to Transcendence. This is it. This is the end of the game. We have now our planet dominating civilization with all of its power has now completed the final step And that is it. Lady Deirdre of the Gaians leads humanity in the ascent to transcendence, the next step in human evolution. Epilogue. Mission year 1,027,823. After a million or so orbits around your primary, you pause to reassess your efforts. The stellar encapsulation is proceeding smoothly, and in a few hundred thousand more orbits will provide you with a 90% draw on your primary's radiation, trapping all the energy off the plane of the ecliptic. Deep space ox links allow you to watch the frame assembly in low stellar orbit and follow the progress of bug-like Jovian freighters loaded with resupply mass. Occasionally, you spot one of your transhuman friends slash symbiotes supervising activity on a scaffolding, even the immortals sometimes crave the risk and adventure of independent incarnation. Some of the most daring souls even undertook to resume interstellar travel, beginning with a return to your nearest neighbor to sift through the ashes of its third planet and recolonize their home system. In the present age, you hear a nanotech civilization is thriving there once again. In such times of repose, you often sift through your personalities and recall your former selves. Your alpha self derives from an individual once called Deirdre, over the millennia, the exceptional focus and judgment characteristic of this fragment have proven effective on numerous occasions. The Deirdre self now drives all of your long-range and short-range planning, and is the principal force behind the encapsulation project. 
Ponderous but playful is the Voice Planet personality, avatar of your sessile precursor, who in the present age has devoted her centuries to philosophical pondering. Many others flit about within you. Some, like the prankster Scott and the demon Deirdre, are semi-dominant and often hover near the plane of your thought. Others plumb the depths and create new worlds within the abyss of your open-ended neural network. Sunlight plays across your mottled surface and provides pleasing warmth to your organic components. Recently, you have edged somewhat further away from the primary and purged your atmosphere of certain gases in order to allow the occasional friends-slash-symbiotes who choose to live among your organic gardens an easily breathable mixture. In another 8 billion orbits, the primary will drop off the main sequence and alternate arrangements will have to be made, but for now, you maintain your gardens as a paradise. The transhumans who live among them call it Eden. And that's it. That's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on this. Uh, this, as I said, this was one of the games that I played when I was a young child, and that really, really stuck with me for a very long time. Um, both for its gameplay, which is great. I mean, I love the, the way this game is designed, although it does have flaws, but they are relatively minor compared to the triumph of game design that this is. But also for its thought, for the the writing, the huge amount of writing that went into this. I mean, Brian Reynolds wrote a book just in the form of snippets and little bits and pieces that had to be put together. It was like writing a book as a jigsaw puzzle. And the the emotion that you can see, the, the voice acting is fantastic. The, the writing, as I said, is phenomenal. It's just a really phenomenal work of art, really. Um, that's the only way I can describe it. And so I yeah, I really appreciate you all coming with me in going through this game. And uh, I know, you know, in terms of gameplay, by the end here, there was no question of who would win or how, just because the difficulty level I was playing on and my own familiarity with the game makes made it basically impossible to lose. Uh, I may come back to this sometime. Uh, to actually focus on the gameplay and to do like a challenge run, you know, on the highest possible di possible difficulty level. But in this case, really, I just wanted to do it for the story, for the technology, for the interest, to show how the game is written and what it comes up to. Uh, and I, I, I really enjoyed this, and I hope that you really enjoyed this. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you, my viewers, especially now. Uh, if you liked this video, leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and more content like this will be coming your way on the regular. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do after Alpha Centauri here, uh, but I'll be picking something else up, hopefully another game that will be interesting to watch. Maybe more interesting to watch in gameplay terms, although probably not in story terms, because I'll be honest, it's hard to find a game that does as well as Alpha Centauri when it comes to writing. Uh, if you all have any recommendations, please, please give them to me. I would love to find more great old games like this to look at. And so, as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, actually, as an epilogue, before we leave, here you can see the score. So, zero objectives achieved. I don't know what that means, but you can see you get a population score, technology, you get a separate score for every transcendent thought you develop, plus secret projects. So my total score, 3,210. And when you finally end, I had an Alpha Centauri rating of 160%. So welcome to the Planetary Archives. Following your retirement, the people collect your most memorable writings into a whole book of wisdom entitled Lady Deirdre's Big Book of Recycling Tank Humor. We must consent. 100 surefire pickup lines of Lady Deirdre. These are great. These are just funny. For I have tasted the fungus. Why Lady Deirdre can't blink. The cat in the vat. Everything you ever wanted to know about organic super lubricant but were afraid to ask. I'm okay, you're a drone. Boreholes I have known. The little terraformer that could... Are you there, planet? It's me, Lady Deirdre. Recon rovers, unsafe at any speed. How to raise a nerve-stapled child. Men are from Kiron, women are from Nessus. All I ever wanted to know I learned in the cloning vats. Mindworms in the mist. Our biomachinery ourselves. Actualizing your sentient being, self-help guide for talents. And the unbearable lightness of hover tanks. Alright, that's it. Thank you all so much, everybody. I will see you in the next video.